Hello, welcome to EVPN VXLAN Explainer 2. I'm Joe Neville. And in this series of videos, as the title suggests, we're going to be looking at EVPN VXLAN. Now, as this is the second video, let's recap where we are. EVPN works in the control plane and EVPN peers share learnt MAC addresses to build a view of MAC reachability in their network. Now, how do they do this? Well, with BGP. EVPN is an extension of BGP. So let's dive in and look at what that means. Asking how do BGP peers form sessions and how do they know that they and their peers are enabled for EVPN? That's what we're going to take a look at. In the past, BGP version 4 was IPv4 only. V4 was the default address type in BGP updates, configure a BGP session and V4 was enabled. But then came multi-protocol BGP, which allowed updates of other types of addresses. So we had IPv4, but now we had IPv6 and not just unicast, we could share multicast updates as well. And these could be V4 or V6. And these address types are called address families. To differentiate between these different types of addresses, BGP uses address family identifiers or AFIs and subsequent address family identifiers or SAFIs. These two IDs combine to identify the network layer protocol in use and its semantics. And the IDs are numbers. So starting with AFIs, IPv4 has a value of one and IPv6 has a value of two. Then we have the SAFIs, unicast is one, multicast is two. And as another example, MPLS labeled updates are four. So putting these together as AFI, SAFI pairs, IPv4 unicast uses AFI1, SAFI1, V4 multicast, AFI1, SAFI2, and V6 multicast, for example, AFI2, SAFI2. I sound like I'm doing the football results right now. But what about eVPN then? Well, that belongs to an address family called L2VPN with an AFI of 25 and a sub address family actually called eVPN with a value of 70. To signal eVPN then, our BGP peers signal that they support L2 VPN EVPN AFI 25 SAFI 70. And interestingly, if we take a close look at the config, that's why the config command to configure EVPN is labeled L2 VPN EVPN. That's what we use in the show commands. I sometimes trip over that, but this is the reason because it's the full address family and sub address family that we're actually indicating in our commands. Now, AFI SAFI is used to perform two actions in BGP. One, to signal to appear the supported address families and two, to indicate the address families of the feasible routes that are being advertised in BGP updates. So we see AFI and SAFI during BGP session establishment and when advertising routes. Let's look at that first instance then, session establishment. And in doing so, we'll answer the question, how does BGP signal its supported address families? And in particular, how does a BGP configured device tell its peers that it supports eVPN? And to answer this, we need to look into the BGP finite state machine or FSM. And as a side note, if you're working with BGP, this stuff is worth knowing. And it's not just for passing certs and then forgetting so BGP uses an FSM. This is a theoretical model which, according to Wikipedia, can be in exactly one of a finite number of states at any given time. Essentially, we have a model with different states and these change based upon inputs. Here are the BGP states then. So we start with idle and we finish with established. And for a successful session establishment, we'll go idle, connect, open send, open confirm, and then establish. This active, which I've included, is a state which is a fallback if there's an issue. But where we want to be is in the established state, of course. So let's have a closer look at these then and the different inputs and outputs as we change states. So starting with idle, this is where our BGP speakers will be trying to form the TCP connection that BGP will use. And once that's successfully established, we will move to the connect state. And in this state, our BGP speakers will send a special BGP message called a BGP open. And that open message contains information for the build of the session, like the local AS, but also some optional capabilities can be included into that. More about that in a moment. So once that's sent, we move to the open sent state 
and in that state what we're doing is we're waiting for the far end so our potential BGP peer to send its BGP open and what the local device will do is it checks this open so it checks the details that are in there if everything's okay with that against the local configuration then the local device sends a keep alive and moves to the open confirm state and in this state, the local device is essentially waiting for the far end to check the BGP that open that was sent here and to send back a keep alive if everything checks out as good from its point of view. So if we receive that keep alive from the far end, that's where we move to established and that's where the BGP speakers exchange their BGP update. So this is the root information here. Okay, and the one that we're really interested in is this BGP open here. And to visualize this then, we've got a couple of BGP speakers. So what we do, what I've just run through, is that they form the TCP session first of all. Once that TCP session is good, then a BGP open is sent. So let's have a closer look. And here is a capture of a BGP open from my lab. This is coming from Wireshark, of course. So we can see here that we have the type of this message being open. Then we've got information, like I said, in the open, you have specific information for the build, such as the local AS number. And you can see you've got like the identifier there as well and other things. Okay, so we have also the ability to signal optional parameters like the capabilities that we support. Can you see where this is going? Um, then we've got the capability there of the support for multi protocol extensions. And then finally we get to it. So it's the L2 EVPN AFI SAFI. And you can see there, those are the numbers. So the AFI 25 and the SAFI of 70. Okay, so that is how a BGP peer signals that it can support this L2 VPN EVPN address family. It's in the BGP open. Okay, so that's a lot of theory. Let's move this on and do something much more practical in the lab. Here's the plan. I'm going to configure BGP peers. I'm going to activate the eVPN address family. And as I'm doing so, I'm going to sniff the packets and verify with show commands. So here is my network. It's similar to the one from the first video. It is three Aruba 6300s, all in the same AS. Now I'm actually just going to focus on R1 and R2, so we're not cluttering up the captures too much. So it's going to look like this essentially. And I am going to mirror this port here. So we are going to sniff the packets from this port. So we'll see the TCP and the BGP that flows between R1 and R2. Okay, here we are logged into my Aruba 6300 R1 over on the left and I've got Wireshark over there. So we're mirroring that port 1110. So that Wireshark doesn't get filled with lots and lots of packets, I'm filtering on TCP and BGP, but also at the moment what I've done is I have shut down that port that we're mirroring so I can do the config first and then open it up so you can see the stuff coming in in real time. Okay, now the other point is that there's no BGP on this device. There is on R2 that we're connecting to. So R2 is fully configured, but R1 isn't, so that we've got some control on the updates here. Right, so with the port shut then, I will begin to configure BGP. So it's BGP 65001, BGP router ID, which is 192.168.0.1. Very similar to what you saw me do in the first video and we are going to two remote AS C5001 and I want that update source to be zero. Okay at this stage so we don't have any address families configured but if we go and open the port you'll be able to see the TCP forming so we can do it in stages. So let's not a shut let's do a no shut. Okay, so after a few seconds, what we have is you can see here in Wireshark, we've got TCP and we've got some BGP messages as well. What we've got is dot two, the other end of the link, sending to dot one, a TCP SYN to our port 179. And we've got the SYN ACK ACK there, but that actually gets shut down because we don't have any BGP address families configured at the moment. We've got dot one is sending a notification. That's what tears down BGP essentially. 
um, and then we finish that connection, that TCP connection. You do see an open at this stage, but essentially the BGP session is not ready to be established. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll shut that, restart this. There we go. Okay. And I'll carry on with the address family. So no, one of the things I wanted to show is without any address families, you can't form a BGP adjacency. That won't will not become established. Okay. What we need to do is our address. Oh, let's go to BGP, and we'll go to our address family. And of course, it is L two VPN eVPN, and we know why that is now. Hopefully, okay. So enter that. And we will turn this on for our neighbor 192.168.0.2. Activate the port shut so nothing's going to come through at the moment. And we need to do that. We're going to send community both. Okay. Now let's go to the port and do a no shut. Okay, so there we are. I'll stop that then and let's dive into this. I'll pull that across. Okay, so what we've got is dot one to dot two. We are sending the TCP SYN to 179, two responding, and then dot one sending back the ACK. Notice that it was dot one that was the first in the exchange here to send the uh, TCP SYN. And then dot one sends the open message. So this is what we're interested in. We'll just track it through. So we've got the open message we've got an open message we've got the keeper lives so this is where when the keeper lives are exchanged so dot two sending a keeper life to dot one and dot one to dot two that's where we will move into established and that's where we send the update so these are the bgp messages in pink you've got the two opens the two keeper lives and then you've got two updates being sent okay so let us dive into this first open message then i'll bring that up it's going to be a lot here actually so uh we already did this on the slide but there you can see dot one to dot two you've got the open message there the type the version you know it's bgp4 okay the as hold time identifier and then we go into the parameters so you open that up it's the different capabilities various capabilities there like root refresh and support for the four octet as number capability uh, graceful restarts in there and this thing about some other vendor i don't know who they are um, so um what we also have is the multi-protocol extensions capability there and there we are with our afi and our safi so 25 and 70. So let's jump back to R1. Now the session should be established. From what we've seen in the Wireshark, we would say, you know, the conclusion I would draw is that the sessions are established because we've got the updates. Okay, but let's actually have a look at that on the device then and do some show commands. So let's come out of here. Go to the top, I'll exit out of that. Right, so show BGP L2 eVPN and what should we go for let's go for a summary right there we are we have our neighbor there dot two remote as and we are established of course we're established okay um so you can dive in and see a bit more detail with some other commands which are very useful uh we have which one am i after let's go for that neighbor's command there okay get rid of that neighbor is that the full one yeah right so here we have a lot of information about dot two so we've got the different ip addresses that we're using local and the remote as the different ports being shown there the state that we're in of course the update source so lots going on here about the session but in particular what i wanted to show you is let me scroll this up because here we have the address families. Okay, first of all, well, let's have a look at this. So here we've got the capability advertised and received. So this is good for troubleshooting because it is those optional capabilities. What has been sent, you know, if you're not sniffing the packets, you can still look and see what we've advertised and what's been received as part of that BGP open. And of course, so here are the other address families that we can configure on AOS CX, a so V4 Unicast and V6 Unicast, 
we've not configured those, but what we have configured, of course, is the L2 VPN, eVPN. So we've advertised and received that there. So this can be useful if your session is not coming up and you want to know why, you know, you can check the capabilities to see why BGP won't establish. And then we can actually see here below about the address family. So the L2 VPN, eVPN address family, you've got address family specific information there available, like if you've got a route map against that, which we don't at the moment, but things like, you know, I set, I did configure that other command, which you need to do for eVPN, which is the send community. We've set that up there with both. Okay, so that's the show commands. But there's one other thing that I want to show you before we finish this video. We're, we're just going to have a quick look at it and then that will be the end because I want to deal with this in a later video. Okay, right. So I did mention that you see that AFI, SAFIs in the open messages. So we've seen that, where is it? It is here and the SAFI there. You also see it to indicate what type of update is being sent. So we have this address family for L2 VPN, eVPN, but also the updates need to be identified as belonging to that address family. And here we have some updates. Now these updates don't actually have any roots in them because I haven't configured that side. So we've got no customer side, we've got no MAC addresses to inject into BGP at the moment. That's on purpose. I just wanted to concentrate in this video specifically on this session and these updates, but we can see where the AFI, SAFI is in the updates from these initial ones that are sent after establishment. This is from dot one to dot two. Let's bring this up. And as you can see here, if we open up this update message, it's a multi-protocol unreachable. So we don't have any messages. It sends, it sent this update. And there you can see in this update, we would normally, if we were, we would send this if we were removing some routes, like if um, a MAC address was not available anymore, we would send withdrawn routes. Obviously, we don't have any updates to send because we don't have any MAC addresses at the moment. But you can see there in the update, so a BGP update, you can see the address family identifier, the AFI of 25 for the L2 VPN. And you can see the subsequent address family identifier, the SAFI for eVPN with the designation of 70. Okay, but that's just a uh, sneak peek for what we're going to go into. I wanted to divide these videos up specifically to the topic. Like I said, this is just about going deep around the BGP session and the signaling for the eVPN address family. In the next video, in Explainer 3, we're going to be looking at updates, specifically the different route types for eVPN. So I'll get working on that now, and I hope you will join me for that one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. It just leaves me to say, my name's Joe Neville, and goodbye.